To tell us a bit more, Leela Jacinto is with me here in the studio. And Leela, barely a year ago now, you were in Turkey yourself covering the presidential and the parliamentary elections. For full disclosure, I was there as well uh, at that time. Now, Erdogan and his party, they did very well. They won those elections. Clearly not this time. What went wrong? Yeah, I mean, and we've gone used to describing the Turkish political system as an electoral autocracy mm. or a competitive authoritarianism. So, like, did the opposition beat electoral autocracy? Mm. And how did this happen? Well, I mean, because if you go to see, the, the context was the same. The economy was bad last year. It's bad this year as well. Uh, and the presidential candidate for the opposition, the secular opposition CHP uh, party last year, uh, uh, Kemal Kilic Darulu, the presidential candidate, ran on the economy. He famously ran on the price of an onion. Mm. He didn't win. Mm. Uh, so there are, you know, there are a couple of factors uh, at play over here. One, this is a local election. So voters tend to be more bold and they tend to uh, vote in more issues-driven uh, way. Uh, they, they concentrate less on values and personality uh, than in presidential elections. Two, and I think this is important, is personalities matter mm -hmm. in, in, in Turkish elections. You know, given that the economy is, was bad, the CHP candidate last year in the presidential uh, election, Kemal Kilic Darulu, you know, a septuagenarian, mild-mannered, colorless person. He just failed to rouse mm. the electorate. The CHP this time had much stronger candidates. Ikram Imam Uglu, who ran for Istanbul, as well as the Ankara mayoral candidate. They're very strong candidates. Mm. That captured uh, the electorate, I would say. Another very interesting thing was a lot of the smaller parties in this election, they ran their own candidates. They did not form alliances. Now, last year for the presidential and parliamentary elections, uh, uh, you know, the Kurdish party, for instance, backed the secular opposition. What is very interesting in this election was what happened in the Islamist spectrum, mm -hmm. the right Islamist spectrum. Now, we have a small Islamist party. It's called the New Welfare Party or the YRP party. Uh, it's described as a hardline Islamist party. Some even describe it as a fundamentalist Islamist party. Last year, they ran in an alliance with the ruling AKP in the People's Alliance. For these local elections, they ran their own candidates and they competed against Erdogan's party. And they are really one of the surprise big winners of this election. This party, very small party, founded in 2018, won more than 6% of the vote. It won the third largest vote share of, of this election. And I think what is interesting to look at is this party and its founder, Fatih Erbakan, uh, who's you know, who put in an interesting dynamic in what happened yesterday. So tell us a bit about him and why you think really he's the story of the day. Well, Fatih Erbakan is uh, the son of one of Turkey's foremost Islamist politician, Nechmetin uh, Erbakan. Nechmetin, the father, uh, was actually Erdogan's political mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, he had, he's formed several Islamist parties, but the last party that he formed broke up in 2001, and the AKP was one of two splinters uh, that happened. So Nechmetin is, is, is sort of the doyen of political Islamism uh, in, in, in Turkey. He's deceased now, but his son is now uh, in political now, I did not watch his son, Fatih, on the campaign trail, and frankly, not many of us did. Mm -hmm. But I've been pe speaking to people who did watch his campaign, and they say that, you know, he's as charis charismatic as his father. If that's the case, that's a lot of charisma. Mm -hmm. So once again, we see personality. But what was interesting is the platform on which he ran. He consistently attacked Erdogan on the Gaza war, on the fact that Turkey has free trade with Israel, on the fact that statistics actually showed that Turkish-Israeli trade increased after the October 7th uh, Gaza war began. And, and so uh, in his victory speech yesterday, he acknowledged the fact that, you know, this victory, he said, w was decided by the behavior of those who continue to trade freely with Israel. So, you know, on the rightward side of the Turkish political spectrum, there are also, there's a there's a sense of getting fed up with the AKP as well as on the left secular side. Mm. How interesting. Thank you very much indeed, Leela Jacinto, for us there.